Good morning and welcome, the warmest of welcomes on this Christmas morning. We understand that many people will be feeling anxious, many few people will be frightened. And so in the next 45 minutes or so, let's cast all those doubts aside and rejoice in the birth of our Saviour. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from, who, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the words of the angel to Joseph. You shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Therefore, let us seek the forgiveness of God through Jesus, the Savior of the world. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and words and deed. Through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
and the collect for today, Christmas Day. Almighty God, you have given us your only begotten Son to take our nature upon him. And as at this time to be born of a pure virgin, grant that we who have been born again and made your children by adoption and grace may daily be renewed by your Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We shall now have our readings. The reading is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 2 to 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you, as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken, as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onwards and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May I speak in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Prince of Peace. Well, happy Christmas. For the second year running, it's a strange and weird Christmas, not the Christmas we would have chosen. But Christmas, it still is. 
Christmas, whatever some may say, cannot be cancelled or trivialised or erased. Christmas is for us, as Christians, a day of great celebration, a day when we are given and hopefully receive the greatest of all gifts of all presents, Jesus. To accept the gift of the Christ child is to accept a reality that affirms that God is both with us and for us, present with us, present for us. And this is good news. Christmas is a gift that comes with a whole series of invitations. Although Christmas is a day or even an event, it is also an orientation. Through the events of Christmas, we are invited to enter a whole new way of both believing and behaving. The gift of the Christ child invites us to reflect on the gift of life itself, asking us to consider afresh how are we going to live and live well. And the readings we have heard this morning provide us, with not in, if not with instructions, then at least significant clues. Isaiah asks us to think of the metaphors through which we can consider Jesus, mighty counsellor and prince of peace. While the story of the shepherds travelling to Bethlehem remind us that life is a journey, Christianity is a journey. The paradox of the Christian journey is, of course, that Jesus is both the starting point and the destination. It's a circular journey, if you like. When we receive for ourselves the gift of the Christ child or Messiah, the gift which is freely given, the consequences, transformation, change, salvation even. This was certainly the case for the shepherds. Nothing was ever the same for them again. When we first encounter the shepherds, we enter into a world dominated by anxiety, oppression, political and religious oppression and fear. Do not be afraid, says the angel. I wonder this Christmas how many of us are in some ways, if not afraid, then at least anxious and nervous about the future. I know that I am. So the challenge for me is to keep my eyes focused on Jesus, the Jesus who has become present to all of us. Like the shepherds, perhaps like all of us, I need to make sure that I am constantly journeying towards Jesus in the faith and hope that as I do, my layers of despair, discord and darkness will be peeled away, irrespective of the turmoil the events seem to keep throwing at us. To be replaced by a sense of courage, peace and joy. That however the dark, work, work, dark the world seems, we will walk as children of light. And of this I am deeply convinced that an unhealthy world is in desperate need of a healthy church. This is my last Christmas in this benefice, a benefice which I have loved serving and I am pleased, strange as it sounds, to be leaving you in Christmas and Epiphany reason. For Christmas invites us all to start afresh, to open our eyes and to receive the best present ever given, the reality of Jesus present with us and for us. Our task is to simply unwrap the present until we, with the heavenly host, see and acclaim Jesus in all his glory. For when we do this, the result is that we too will become glorified. So how can we accept and lovingly unwrap the present that we have been given. Well, perhaps the best place to start is through the metaphorical writing paper, wrapping paper, sorry, that Isaiah has given to us. As you make your Christmas journey, can you regard Jesus as the wonderful counsellor? Perhaps thinking that if you can't, who are you actually going to replace him with? And what of the Prince of Peace, allowing his story to become your story. For if you can, your yoke of burden will become easier to bear, whatever the world throws in your way. 
My hope and prayer for you this Christmas, even as I prepare for the next stage of my pilgrimage, is that you will never stop journeying towards Jesus. Not just for your own sakes, because, but because I passionately believe that an unhealthy world is in desperate need of a healthy church. A church that simply allows Jesus to be the wonderful counsellor and the Prince of Peace. Having received the best of all presents, let us become the best of all presents. May you have a truly blessed Christmas. Amen. Let us pray. Loving Jesus, as we journey towards you, may we view you as our wonderful counsellor. As we reflect on your story, may we grow ever wiser, ever more compassionate. Loving Jesus, you are the Prince of Peace. We pray for peace, peace in our own hearts, peace in our own church, peace in our own family, peace in our own communities, peace in and, and amongst the nations of the world. Be for us the Prince of Peace. Loving Jesus, you were born into a human family. You were raised by Mary and Joseph. You had brothers and sisters. We pray for all families so stretched and burdened at this time. We pray that families would be places of safety, security, hope and love. Loving Jesus, you were born a fragile child, a vulnerable baby. We pray for all fragile children throughout the world. We pray that each and every person would be treated with the utmost of respect, that all may grow to maturity in love. We pray at this Christmas time for all who seek to serve our nation and the peoples of the world, all involved in the COVID vaccination rollout programmes, all charged with making public policy, all charged with the vocation to keep us safe. Grant them wisdom and integrity. And we pray for ourselves this Christmas time that you would broaden our minds and warm our hearts, that our hands would be open to receive you with joy and that through the Christmas story, we may be changed, irrevocably changed, and all for the glory of your name. Lord Jesus, you are amongst us. Help us to cherish you, to love you, to learn from you, this Christmas day and always. Amen. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his name shall be called the Prince of Peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And if you're able, please offer that sign of peace to someone else. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to set before you, fruits of the vine and work of human hands. 
it will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with the whole company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forevermore praising you and singing. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who took it in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Accept through him, our great high priest, this, our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love and unite us in the body of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, 
in songs of everlasting praise. And as our Savior taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation, and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we, with the whole company of Christ, may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. The Body of Christ broken for us. The blood of Christ shed for us. God our Father, whose word has come among us in the holy child of Bethlehem, may the light of faith illumine our hearts and shine in our words and deeds through him who is Christ the Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Christ, who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and heavenly, fill you with peace and goodwill, and make you the partakers of the divine nature, 
and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you, those people that you love, this day and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord on this Christmas day. In the name of Christ. Amen.